everyone, and welcome to the weekly Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy podcast, Holistic Transformation. I made a uh, a video for the Up Level International World Summit, and it was too long. <laughs> so it's a podcast today, since I had to redo the uh, the recording I did for the summit so that it's only a half hour. But this is basically an overview of my Own for Success program in 45 minutes. Of course, the program is hours long, <laughs> so it's just a high-level overview. Um, for three weeks in a row, we talked about specific elements, and there's a little bit of those elements in this presentation, but this is a much more in-depth presentation about all five elements and how to use them for success, manifestation, and healing. So on with the show. Thank you for joining Hello, us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Up Level World Summit. I'm Dr. Beverly Lawrence. And if I may, today, I would like to share with you uh, my signature talk, Ohm for Success. It's about the five elements, and we'll go over what those are, and knowing the element archetypes and how to use those archetypes for success and healing. So to make it a little easier to understand what I'm saying, I do have some slides so I'll just do a share screen and we'll go full screen. There we go. So the enlightened aspect of the summit is understanding your vibrational body and the frequency with which you hold is paramount to becoming your best self and creating your dream life. And that's what your element archetypes are all about. What is your vibration or frequency? And how can you use that to create your dream life? Um, so what is a dream life? Well, it's something different from everyone, right? Uh, some people want to have optimal health. Some people want to get healthy. Some people want to stay healthy. Some people want to manifest uh, either a business or some aspect um, maybe it's uh, you just want to have time to ride your horse in the woods or you want to achieve certain goals or you want to sit on the beach or you want some balance between work and home life or whatever it is that for you is your dream life. So just imagine what is that and what are your barriers to achieving that life? So what we'll talk about today is, number one, who am I? You know, you don't know me, so I'll introduce myself. A high-level overview, not much there. We only have 30 minutes. Uh, then I always like to define terms because if we start talking about something, we need to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So we'll talk about what is OM, what is transformation, and then we'll have a high-level overview of the five elements before we dive into them. And then I'll talk about the different systems. So there's many, many systems that use five elements, and we'll talk about those, put together a chart so you can see them all together. So if you use any of those systems, you can see how it all fits together. And then there's an archetype for each characteristic. So I'll, I have all of the archetypes on one page. And after that, we'll dive deeper into each of the five types. Okay, so decades ago, like over 30 years ago, I started getting sick. I mean, really sick. I had cancer, fibromyalgia, leaky gut. Uh, I can't even remember everything I had. It, it was terrible. I kept going into anaphylactic shock over and over several times a week and being rushed uh, to the hospital and uh, I ended up with overall five near-death experiences and cancer. And I knew if I continued on the path I was on, I was going to die. There was no way. I had a huge purse full of medicine. It was, it was not a pretty sight. And I kept going to different doctors and 
they couldn't help me. So one day I went to a doctor I hadn't seen in a very long time, but respected. And he said, you need to meditate. I went, meditate? Ooh, why, why would I want to meditate? Well, I had nothing to lose. So I started to meditate. And that changed my life. I had been addicted to diet soda, which I think is what caused the cancer. But I could never release the addiction. Within two weeks of meditating, the addiction just disappeared. And I started getting healthy. I started improving my health. I started studying all kinds of metaphysical subjects. I did a three-year um, training in shamanic practices. And I went on a shamanic journey and asked for help with the cancer. And my helpers came in and boom, I went back. I, I came back out of the journey and all the pain in my chest was gone. I went to the doctor and he says, I don't understand it. Your cancer is gone. So that became my passion. How do I help other people get healthy, stay healthy, change their life, manifest what they want? Um, and I do that through understanding that there's a notion in hermetics of as above, so below. And if you work at the spiritual level, at the top level, it ripples all the way down to the physical level. So you can work at the physical level, and sometimes if there's an emergency, or in some cases, you do have to address the physical level and work your way up. But if you start at the top and work your way down, you can spontaneously heal. You can help uh, uh, work on mental issues emotional issues as well as the physical and then you can also advance spiritually at the highest level so that is now my passion is to help people know that it's not hard you just have to want it and you have to know what meditation to use so that is my passion now to help you uh, manifest your dream life of course for everyone that means something different that's pretty generic um, but I became a an acupuncturist, and uh, I do energy healing and many other different modalities. Um, and that's when I wrote a book, Meditation Demystified, which is based on the five elements. For people who don't want to, if you don't want to take my workshop or whatever, you can read the book. And my free gift goes into even more depth on the five elements. Um, so if you get the free gift, you'll also get even more information. Uh, I also went back to school and got a PhD. Um, and and I, my dissertation was on using sound and light with acupuncture. Um, and it focused on healing energies. Okay, so what is Om, I'm sure you've all heard of it. Some of you may even do Om meditation. The symbol over here, I don't know if that's on your right or your left. It's it's <laughs> to the right of the words. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And um, that is the Sanskrit symbol for Om. Now, sometimes you'll see AUM or AHM. There's different ways to spell it. Those are actually different meditations but om actually means om it is the seed of the universe so that vibration is all the vowels a e i o u and in ancient uh, languages the really old languages like sanskrit and um, mandarin and many other languages they only use symbols the hieroglyph hieroglyphs and then as written languages as we know them with the letters in Hebrew and Aramaic and those early languages they did not include the vowels the vowels were considered sacred today we use vowels so we we've, we've kind of lost touch with the notion that that sound is actually a very very sacred sound everything vibrates and has a frequency everything has its own frequency but it vibrates, and the ohm is the vibration of the universe. 
The universe is holographic, which means each of us, you've heard the term that we all have that divine spark within us. Well, that's because it's holographic. So the entire universe is that spark within us. Because when you divide a hologram in half, both halves are the same. Divide it in quarters, all four quarters are exactly the same, and so on. So you divide it and divide it and divide it and divide it. No matter how many times you divide it for everything that exists in the universe, not just people, but planets and suns and inorganic, whatever exists in the universe is part of that hologram. So in the Vedic literature, the universe originates from an ultimate divine consciousness. So for me, the divine, the quote, God, I try not to use the term God because there's too many different meanings. So I use the term divine, and I'm talking about the divine consciousness that is everything and part of everything and that manifested everything. And then there are five elements or frequencies, and they can be used for healing, for creating change, and for manifestation. So what are those five elements? The symbols up at the top the, in black are very commonly used, simple uh, symbols for fire, earth, air, water, and aether. In Western culture, aether or ether, as they say in the United States, uh, in, in the U.S., they say ether without the A, but physicists call it aether, and it's spelled with the A. And that was removed from our culture and from science a couple hundred years ago. And scientists said, oh, it doesn't exist. So there's a lot of people today who think there's only four elements. But in the East, there's always been five elements. They never did lose the fifth element. And now physicists are saying, oops, there is an aether. And there's a lot of research being done on it. And we're going to talk more about what it is as we get into Aether. Um, so the universe is made up of solids. The core of the universe is a star tetrahedron or a Merkaba. And it is made up of these five symbols that you hear on the right here. Okay, that you see on the right, there's the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron. I put pictures since most people don't know what they look like unless you're a solid geometry fan. Notice that water, which we think of as a pretty simple element, right, has 20 sides. Of all the elements, it's the most complex, which is not intuitive. And then aether is the next most complicated with 12 sides. So we're going to go into that a little bit more. We're not going to get into math or geometry, so don't be scared. Okay, so this is the element overview that I put together of different systems. So in metaphysics, we say fire, earth, air, water, aether. In traditional Chinese medicine or acupuncture or... Um, or oriental medicine or whatever you want to call it. I just say TCM to avoid certain words that trigger some people. So if I say TCM, I'm talking about acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine. So they have the element of fire, which is primarily the heart, small intestine, the earth element, which is the spleen and stomach, and they call it the metal element, which is the lung, large intestines. That's the air element. There's the water element, which is kidney and urinary bladder. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's the aether element, which is the wood gallbladder channels. Ayurvedic medicine, if you know anything about it, they have the three doshas, uh, vata, pitta, kapha. And if you do research on the three doshas, you find out each dosha has two elements yes it fits right in with the five elements as well so the uh pitta is fire kapha is earth but they both also share water so they have those two elements each and then the vata is a combination of air and aether elements 
In astrology, you all know the fire, earth, air, water signs. And in the 2000s, it was found that there is the aether element of physicus or physiac, physiacus. I don't say it right. Sorry. Um, it is somewhat controversial. There are some astrologers that say, no, it doesn't exist, but it, it actually does exist. And there now are some extra astrologers that are beginning to use it. The dates for it actually over partially, partially over or must mostly overlap the Sagittarius sign. And then, of course, some of you have heard of human design. If you haven't, please do check it out. I've learned so much studying human design. And you have five types. Now, there's five aura types, but there are four aura types, but there are five energy types. And the five energy types fit in with the five elements. So manifestors are the fire generators and manifesting generators are earth and about over 80% of the population are in this category. But the manifesting generators also have the element of air. The reflectors are the water element and the projectors are the aether element. Okay, so let's talk about the archetypes. So fire, think of the fire as this is a person with a lot of energy. They can be like the salesperson, the entertainer, Think in astrology, the fire signs. Sometimes they can talk fast and loud and they're very active and they tend to be pretty passionate. So think of your fire elements. Um, the earth arch type is the builder. These are the generators in human design. This is what where most people are. Um, this is what they do. They're the builders, the creators of this 3D world. The air element, think of the air elements in astrology. They're the, the mind people, the thought people, the Geminis, the Libras, the um, Aquarius. Um, we'll get a little bit more into uh, them and emotions when we cover the air element. Um, <clears throat> and then the water element, um, these are... Uh, are the truth seeker, the thinker, the intellectual. They're actually very sensitive. Uh, when you think of the water element in uh, astrology, that's the Cancers, the Pisces, and the uh, Scorpios. Uh, I'm a, a Capricorn, an earth sign, and I was raised with three Pisces and a Scorpio. <laughs> so my life was a little crazy. So when you understand the archetypes of each sign, you can understand why you may or may not be compatible with some people, depending on how much of that energy you have in your chart. And then the aether element is the forerunner. So these are the people who um, see the future. They see uh, barriers that people have obstacles that they have and these are the projectors in in um, the human design i'm a splenic projector so we're the people you come to for advice because we can see what's going on and help you move through it uh so a little bit more in depth on the water element water is a universal solvent uh h2o is the simple chemistry symbol. Um, I feel pretty confident you're not going to freak out by, with a chemistry symbol there because I'm pretty sure everybody here knows what H2O is and that it's water. But think about it. It's three elements. It is representative of the Trinity. And water is everywhere in the universe and no one can survive without it. You can't survive without air either, but you also have to have water. Our body is made up mostly of water. Um, depending on which part of the body you're talking about, the bones don't have a lot of water, but your blood, for example, is about 80% water and the organs are more like 70% water. It is part of who we are and it affects us in every way. The frequencies of water affect us, affect our health, affect every aspect of it. It is the most healing of all the elements. It heals at the physical level, the emotional level, the mental level, and the, uh, the spiritual level. It's a very, very powerful element for healing. 
It is the best element to use for emotional issues. Um, in astrology, well, we talked about the astrology. So the color in Chinese medicine is either dark blue or black. Um, we usually see it on, on uh, tonkas uh, as blue, um, but sometimes it can be represented by the color black. When we use this, when you're upset, emotionally unsettled, we can use water element meditations. When you're triggered, which one could say that is a combination of emotional and mental. Uh, when you want to be calm, you just need to calm down. How soothing is water to look at the ocean or be on a lake, sitting in a boat, or just sitting on a bench looking at a lake or looking at water. Uh, one of my favorite things to do when I lived in California was to go watch the sunset at the ocean. Um, it's also great when you have fear in your thinking. Uh, you can use water element meditations. And when you want to heal old traumas, you've got PTSD. The water element is another great way to heal that. So the fire element, uh, when do we use that? When we need, when we want focus, when we want passion in our lives, fire creates that energy within us. Uh, it is the heart. It's also the small intestine, the pericardium, which is considered the heart protector, uh, and the San Jiao, also known as the triple warmer. And there are various organs and channels associated with this, and the color is red. So when to use this? Well, you've all heard of monkey mind, right? You just Oh, my God. And I have people tell me, oh, I can't sit still and meditate. Well, that you're doing the wrong meditation. You need the fire element. Or um, I just fall asleep when I meditate. Again, you need the fire element. That will help prevent that. Or I don't want to sit there and go, oh, well, you don't. You don't have to sit there. You can do a fire element meditation. And when your energy is scattered, if you've ever been that way, you just get so scattered that you just, you can't focus, you can't do anything. You maybe you're full of worry, you're full of whatever. And this will lead you to be exhausted. You're probably not sleeping right. And then you want to use fire element uh, for healing and for meditation. Then we have the earth element. So you use this for your life purpose. Um, when you don't know your life person, purpose, you can become depressed. Um, you can lose hope. Uh, there is no future. What am I going to do? Um, when you do know your life purpose, this also creates excitement. So not only fire element, but the earth element helps with the excitement in your life. Because this is what gets you out of bed in the morning. You wake up and you think, what am I going to do today? Oh, I'm going to go do this. Remember, the earth element is the most common. So if you are an earth element, a generator, a manifesting generator, and you have no purpose, you don't even want to get out of bed. If you have no purpose, you will become de depressed. And depression these days is everywhere. There's so many people who are now depressed, so many people who have lost hope. And people say, well, how do I manifest my dream life? You manifest it through your life purpose. Now, for some of us like me, our life purpose can change over time. Our life purpose can be multifaceted. You know, when when we were young, we wanted to be this and this and this and this and this. And you go to college and what's your what's your major going to be? You don't know. Whereas other people, they're at a very young age. They say, when I grow up, I'm going to be this. And they know and they live their whole life that purpose. They know. But not everybody knows. So you need to figure out what is that purpose. And if if you just have one purpose... What do you do if that purpose is your job and now it's time to retire? You just lost your purpose. So you do have multiple purposes, and I like to divide them into three categories. You can have more, of course. One category would be your personal. What are you going to do for your personal life? Uh, what kind of diet do you want to have? How healthy do you want to be? 
Another purpose would be your professional purpose. What are you going to do? What are you going to create for others? And then you have your spiritual purpose. Who you are you as a soul in this lifetime? And what contracts do you have that you incarnated with to create in this life? So that's all under the earth element. It's a very big and um, uh, very purposeful element. Um, so it is the basis of all elements. So I, I over here on the, the right of the slide, however that is for you, is a circle with a cross in the middle. So you can think of earth as being the center of the cross. And then the other elements are northeast, south, and west. And that would be the fire. Um, who's west? I don't remember which one's west. <laughs> um, anyway, it's, it's uh, fire, water, air, and aether with earth in the middle. And they each have a direction. And it just flipped right out of my head for the moment. Um, but... This is what the Native Americans, if you, I studied with a Cherokee medicine woman and she taught me the medicine wheel and they actually have these four elements. They're the four directions, west, north, east, and south. And the center is the earth and the moon and the sun all are in the middle. In Chinese medicine, we call it the earth with the other elements around on the outside. Um, so without earth, the others don't exist. Earth element is the most grounded. So if you need to be more grounded in your life, you need more of the earth energy. And we ground to Mother Earth because she has a very specific frequencies. I think it's 7.68 or something like that. And they found with the astronauts, if they get too far away from the earth and away from that frequency, they don't do as well. So they actually generate that frequency on the space station and on um, non-terrestrial flights. Because without that frequency, we don't exist. We will get sick. We need that frequency. So it's a very important frequency to have at all times. <clears throat> and I don't know if you've heard of the Schumann resonance. We don't resonance. We don't have time to go into that here, but the Schumann resonance is the earth frequency and it's what we live in. And when you, you hear about how toxic electronics are, it's because they disrupt and interfere with the Schumann resonance that we need. So the earth signs are all very practical and material oriented especially you think of the Taurus. When you want to manifest money, you go to the second or sixth house for Taurus. Is second house. What's the opposite? I don't remember. Maybe it's Aquarius. So the organs are spleen and stomach, which is digestion. And uh, for a lot of people, what breaks first is your digestive system because we don't all have the best diet. So this is one reason why diet is so important, especially because it affects directly the earth element. And in TCM, its color is yellow. Okay, the air element. This one's a little more etheric and elusive because it's air. <laughs> and this is metal in TCM, and it means mind or mental. And this affects how you come across to others. So obviously, we talked about the signs already, and those signs have the meaning of mental. And I'm in a, a, a Twitter group that deals with astrology. It's full of astrologers. I'm not an astrologer, but I like to follow them. And one of the questions, someone's always asking, what sign is this? What sign is that? And they're always asking, which sign is the most insensitive? And it always comes up, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Probably if you took a vote, Aquarius would be considered the most insensitive. Then comes Gemini and then maybe the Libra, because the Libra does try to find balance. But if think about famous people that you know. And is there a politician you know that's a Gemini that got thrown off various social media <laughs> groups because he was insensitive? Um, whether you've 
are pro or against him, I don't care. I'm, I don't do politics, but there is one particular well-known politician. I'll let you figure out who that is. If you haven't figured it out yet, that uh, has a way of insulting people and he's a Gemini. Um, attention is from the mind. So if you want to manifest, there's three aspects that you need attention, intention, and energy. And the attention comes from the mind, right? And we get that from the air element. Um, and some say that the air elements breathe through life. And in Chinese medicine or TCM, the color is white. Uh, so the aether element, um, this is sometimes referred to as space or spirit. So to physicists, they call it space, and they used to think space was empty, that it was a vacuum. And it's not true. It's not empty. There is aether. It's everywhere, not just outer space, but everywhere. Um, if you've ever taken any kind of physics or chemistry, then you understand you have a nucleus of an atom and you have electrons and they spin around the atom. And so they say there's all that space. No, there is no space. Everything is filled. And if you study with Bruce Lipton, he's done a lot of research on energy healing and how does it work? How does telepathy work? How are we all connected? We're connected through aether. There's actually structures that we do not see the vibration of, but that it exists. So that's the space aspect. In metaphysics, it's called spirit. So physicists say space is not empty. Metaphysically, it is the monad of the universe. And we really don't have time in a short lecture to talk about what the monad is. If you know what it is, the monad of the universe, everything has a monad. You have a monad. It's above you. Um, yeah, the um, galaxy has a monad. The solar system, the sun, everything has its own monad. So the monad of the universe is the aether element. The color is black and white. This is the yin and yang. It's not yang, by the way, it's yang. So the yin and yang symbol over here on the right, that symbol represents aether. It's the black in the white. So black engenders the white and the white engenders the black. So in other words, one creates the other. That's why it's a spiral within a circle. So one creates the other. It's both the black and the white. Um, so the symbol means everything is in balance. So what can we do with the aether element? Light only exists with darkness. So you can't have all light and you can't have all darkness. And we won't go into the metaphysics here of why that's important for spiritual development, but that's another aspect of Aether is understanding our dark side. Some people say we do shadow work. That's what all that's about. That's part of the Aether aspect, that you are light within dark. You have to choose. You have to choose the light. You have to choose the light over the dark. Um, Native Americans, uh, there's a, what do you call it? A, a fable, a story, a, a thought that there's a wolf on each shoulder. Or in Christianity, they say there's an angel on each shoulder, shoulder, one's light, one's dark, or one wants goodness, one wants evil. And you have to, the one you feed is the one that grows, or you choose, you have free will to choose the light or the dark. And before you condemn the dark, remember that a lot of the energy you use to do things comes from the dark, not from the light. If you were all light, you would just be there, right? Um, I like to use the analogy of one of the original Star Trek episodes with uh, when William Shatner was Captain Kirk, and he got trapped in, um, I don't watch TV, so uh, what do you call it? Be beam me up, Scotty. What are they? The transporter. So he got stuck in the transporter. And when he came through, he came through split. 
and he had the light aspect and the dark aspect. And the light aspect was very meek, meek and didn't want to do anything and didn't want to make any waves. And the dark aspect was very aggressive and mean and nasty. They were fighting. And in the end, the light held the dark and said, we cannot exist without each other. So you need both sides because the, the light keeps the dark from doing harm. But the dark is where the energy comes from. Think about, um, uh, I think it's called DAR, D-A-R, um, or some, I, I think it's called DAR, but it's Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. What it, MAD, it's MAD, M-A-D-D, -D, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. A mother lost her daughter to a drunk driver, and she took all that dark anger energy and created a movement that led to the creation of laws that now arrest people for driving under the influence or, or drive DWI and DWD, whatever those codes are. So that's an example of someone taking the dark and creating light from it. And you create light from the dark and you keep the dark in balance. Um, so that's what Aether is about. It is the liver uh, gallbladder channels in TCM. And all of the energies, all of the organ energies, whether they're the yin organs or the yang organs, so liver is a yin organ, the gallbladder is a yang organ. They all have an energy that goes in a specific direction. It either goes up or it goes down or it goes to the side, like the plus in the center of the circle, except for the liver. It's the only organ where the energy goes in all directions. And that's like aether. Aether goes out in all directions. It, its energy goes everywhere and it comes in from everywhere. So in human design, which is the aether element, they take in the energy from others and they reflect it back but they reflect it back with solutions. The reflector takes the energy in and just reflects back. That's the water element, but the projector element brings it in and it gives you back something for the energy you gave them. So they bring the energy in, they transmute it and they send it back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those are the five elements. Um, there are five categories of meditation. Again, this workshop. <laughs> we don't have time to go into all of this. But uh, the five categories are prayer or mandala, as well as uh, moving meditations fall into that first category. There's soul communication. Uh, you could think of that as telepathy. Uh, energy healing is a type of soul communication where you're just giving energy to each other through the soul. Uh, there's breath meditation, uh, also known as Vipassana, which is a type of breath meditation. Then there's mantra meditation, like when you chant Om, uh, you can um, chant in your mind, or you can literally chant by chanting out loud. And then there's the ascension um, meditations the buddhists call it uh rainbow light meditation the taoists call it diamond body meditation and the christians would just say ascension so what is the best meditation for each of the five elements <clears throat> i'm sure by now you can pretty much guess what they are so soul communication is actually good for all of them as long as you're grounded as long as you're centered and as long as you know where you're going in life and you have your purpose. For the fire element, sitting still is just not going to work for most fire element people. Prayer, this is where um, prayer, there's many, many kinds of prayer, um, mandala meditation, movement meditation. It can be a standing meditation, a walking meditation, a yoga, tai chi, a qigong. There's just many, many kinds of moving meditations. In the United States, particularly, a lot of people think yoga is an exercise, and no, it it is intended as a meditation, 
And the poses are to help you heal those aspects, either in a channel, depending on the pose, or on some aspect of yourself. And that's the, the uh, underlying reason for doing certain poses in yoga is to heal certain aspect or to develop certain aspects of yourself. The earth element does really, really well with soul communication. The air element can do, obviously, breath meditations. And the water element, when you want to heal some aspect of the water element, uh, this is when you do the mantra meditations. You can do OM, but there's literally thousands of mantra meditations you can do. And this is not um, affirmations. I don't recommend ever meditating using English or affirmations. Affirmations are for, um, what do you call it? Okay, I'll think of it in a second. Um, meditation is when you're going within versus when you're uh, aware of what you're doing while you're in the waking state living in your world. And I'll think of the name of that in a second. And then the Aether meditation is the rainbow body or diamond body or ascension meditations, which you may or may not have even heard of. Um, they're very, very specific. And unless you dig deep into those kind of meditations, you probably haven't even heard of them. Um, and this is all referenced in my book, uh, Meditation Demystified, a workbook for everyone. Uh, which is written by Dancing Bear, which is my metaphysical name, my, my shamanic healing name. Um, okay, I said I would think of that word. So there's meditation and then there's, uh, okay, I'm just having a brain fart day for some reason. Um, anyway, what you use, mindfulness, there we go. It's, um, Mindfulness and meditation are two different things. They're not the same, but people use them in, uh, interchangeably, but they're not the same. Meditation is what you do so that you are mindful during the day. It's like exercise is what you do so that you feel good and are healthy during the day while you're not exercising. That's the difference between meditation and mindfulness. Meditation is what you do so that you can be mindful the rest of the day. And for mindfulness, we frequently use English little affirmations and what have you on little post-it notes or whatever you want to do. That's fine. Meditation, you should only use a sacred language. There's a number of sacred languages. There's a lot of Sanskrit. If you don't feel comfortable for religious beliefs or whatever, and you don't want to use any Sanskrit, you can always use Om. You can also use Mandarin. <clears throat> Mandarin is not a sacred language, but it is a tonal language. And the tonal languages still have that vowel aspect, aspect to them, that deep inside aspect. And a, a real simple meditation you can use if you don't want to use OM because you think that's just too out there, you can use I. It sounds like the personal pronoun I, the capital I. But it's spelled A-I. I. And it resonates in the heart. I. I. And it means love in Mandarin. Okay. So... This is my programs. We'll skip these for now because I use the same slides for everything. Um, so we'll stop share. Here I am. So I hope you enjoyed my little talk on the five elements. And you've got something about what you need to work on and what element to use and what meditation style you can use to work on that element, whether you're trying to heal something uh, mental, something emotional, something physical, or you're just trying to work on your spiritual aspect. And uh, all of that will depend on where you are, what your dream life is, and what your life purpose is, and what goals you want to achieve. And um, that can all be done by understanding the five elements and which ones uh, apply to you in those areas. You actually have all five but you're dominant with different elements in different parts of your life. 
So I hope you've enjoyed the Up Level World Summit. I'm Dr. Beverly, and it was wonderful being with you. Remember to be the light you want to see in the world.